It's a great day to glorify God. This is Pastor Jason Pollan coming to you from the Shelter from the Storm podcast, a daily brief dive into God's Word. And we are in the Gospel of Mark. We're in Mark chapter 10. I'm in the New American Standard Version. And again, just to kind of level set to give us the context, um, the previous passage we looked at was the passage on divorce. And Jesus addresses that and basically says to the Pharisees who are trying to uh, go to, you know, the task with him on the law of Moses and are arguing that, Hey, if Moses allowed us to get a divorce, then what's your deal, Jesus? Why are you, what's your thoughts on this? And they're trying to trip him up. And Jesus basically says, you guys are paying, you're playing the legalistic game. You need to look back at what the real intent of marriage was and really what Moses uh, was intending based on what God had already thus declared. And Genesis two, Jesus cites, back to that pivotal text where, where God made man male and female. And marriage is an institution by God designed between one man, one woman for life in the covenant bonds of marriage. And what God has joined together, let no one tear asunder or separate. Now there are, we talked about a couple conditions where in a broken world, divorce is allowed by God because to not allow it would possibly cause worse evil to, to happen on a broken planet. But by no means is God saying, hey, if you're unhappy, if it's just the time has run out and you want to move on to somebody else, just get a divorce. And that's what some of the Jews actually believe. And a lot of people in human history, including now even liberal theologians, believe that that is okay before God. And in fact, Jesus says, no, you are having hard hearts. Instead of being willing to sacrifice for the other to love the other, to try to seek reconciliation, to do what God has called us to do, to love him and love others, you uh, have a hard, selfish heart and you have tried to rationalize your divorce. So it's a strong message. For those who have been divorced, I know it's a hard message. And maybe you were improperly divorced, unbiblically divorced. And I, all I can say to you is that the gospel is bigger than that sin. It, it wasn't, if it was not a biblical divorce, that was a sin before God, before that's exactly what Jesus declares it as. He calls it adultery in Mark chapter 10. But Jesus came to die for adulterers like all of us. We're all adulterers at heart because we lust. But divorce is a sin when it's not done uh, under the biblical way that God allows it. And so if that's happened, you don't need to beat yourself up. You need to go to the cross and Jesus was beat up for you and for me. Um, but that is the teaching on divorce. And so that's to be a preventative to those of us who might think we should get a divorce and realize that that would be a sin against God. So in that context, then we see Jesus talk about the little children. We have this account in verse 13, chapter 10, they were bringing children to him so that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. But when so the disciples apparently were bring, uh, rebuking the parents, although maybe they were rebuking the children as well in that culture, children were not viewed very highly. And in context, it's similar to the ways in which the culture viewed women, and that's where the hard-heartedness is so wicked and that it oppresses the vulnerable uh, women because a lot of times when they were divorced, they were cast out with no hope of income, no hope of security, and it would often tempt them to secure some kind of, you know, maybe they got into the wrong profession, you know, like uh, the ancient profession of prostitution, or they, you know, were willing to get remarried. Um by some guy who didn't care about God's rules. And, and basically uh, Jesus says in one of the other gospels that you forced her to become an adulterer. And so the, the vulnerable state of women um, is why also this divorce clause or divorce teaching was in there so that we don't abuse women in our selfishness because we look down on them, at least in that culture. Same thing with the children. They look down on them. And Jesus is indignant by that as well. He says, permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. And he took them in his arms, and just the tenderness there of Jesus, began to bless them, laying his hands on them. So you have this um in context here, the vulnerable women, vulnerable children, and Jesus wants to defend both groups. And in fact, makes a very strong statement by saying these groups who recognize their absolute vulnerability, their absolute inability to defend themselves in many cases, and the absolute dependency that children have 
uh, and the society, it, really children always have absolute dependency on their parents, right? They can't do anything for themselves. Um, but in the society too, where they're really looked down upon and not valued as they are, uh, we are probably, we probably risk the, um, the temptation to idolize our children in this particular American culture. Uh, but again, Jewish culture would probably be on the very opposite end where they were seen and not heard and, you know, assets to the farm and, uh, you know, hopefully going to be a secure social security for the parents when they get into old age, but they weren't uh, viewed as um, maybe as valuable as a highly producing adult male. And Jesus says, it's those kinds of people though, that the kingdom of God is for those who realize that they can bring nothing to the table, that the only hope is to just cast themselves upon the mercy of a very merciful God, a very loving God who takes us into his arms and blesses us, lays his hands upon us because he loves us. And, and that's the verse in 15. And I thought I was going to get into the rich young ruler today. I think I'm going to cut this one short. I'm trying to actually get these podcasts a little bit more brief. So I think I'm going to end it here. Truly I say to you, Jesus says to us, to me, to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. If we think in some way that we have arrived, that we have pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps, that we, because we have uh, been good enough and smart enough and doggone it, people like us, and we have marched up the food chain and been able to uh, bring, uh, bring in the money, bring home the bacon, and become respectable citizens of society, self-producing, self-made men and women, if we have that perspective, which even Christians can have, sadly, the kingdom of God is not a place for us because that perspective has no place in, God, in the gospel, the gospel of salvation. You can't be saved with that kind of ideology. The only way you can be saved is to actually see that everything is a gift of God. And the reason I'm able to even speak right now, the reason I even have this job as a pastor, which came about because God... Uh, put put within me. I didn't really, at the end of the day, ask for it. It took me over. The faith in Jesus. You can't force yourself to believe it. It was a gift. It took me over. And there is some element of choice in there. I don't fully understand, but I didn't uh, kind of come to it on my own. And then to have parents that brought me up in the church and then to have the opportunity even to go to seminary and get a master's of divinity. And then a uh, almost finished with the Master's of Biblical Counseling, and to get all that education, which has been such a blessing and help to me, it's allowed me to even speak these things to you today, which hopefully is a blessing to you. All of that is a gift from God, and I didn't do anything ultimately on my own strength to earn it and to be proud of my accomplishments and to be an independent, self-made man. I am a made man by God. I'm not self-made. I'm a God-made man. And so are you. And so when we get to that place of abject, sort of beautiful, though, humility, where we realize we're just kids, or like the women in that day who felt just so uh, unable to rise above and were always under threat of losing it all because they had no control over their lives. If we get to that perspective where that's who we are, these, these women of old and these children, that we have to depend on a holy and merciful God, and we throw ourselves upon him by faith, that is the kind of people that the Lord welcomes into his kingdom. It's a kingdom filled with people of faith, um, not people of fortitude or uh, people who uh, of force, right? Uh, who think they can kind of muscle their way into life and into the kingdom. Hope that makes sense. Faith is the name of the game, dependency, humility, and, and ultimately uh, in, in, in relationship to the God of the universe, uh, Jesus Christ, who loves us. God bless you guys.